BBC Hereford and Worcester. Well, Russ, this has probably got to be one of my favourite subjects to talk about. Cool. What Spe- subject? The spending travel or... money and travelling and, you know, <laughs> if, if we had spending money. all the money in the world. Oh, well, it's, isn't it a great conversation? If you won the lottery, what would you do? What would you buy? Where would you go? Well, yeah, but I guess I come from the side, you know, I mean, we're talking about this new show, right? Road Rivals, where I'm like the adventurer who rides motorbikes and I travel with Charlie Speed, who likes the luxury, the five star hotels and the mm. and the Aston Martins, etc. But you don't so much get that. Well, so from my point of view, you can actually have an, um, an adventure, which I think is much more rewarding in the long term without having to spend too much money because you could literally go walking across Herefordshire or, you know, somewhere local with a, a, a tent and go sort of skinny dipping at night and for, for like, you know, a few no pounds. Yeah. So I think, you know, you can have very valuable, very memorable adventure travel experiences with somebody that you like traveling with or even on your own for, for not much money. But if you mm. travel with Charlie Speed, he likes to counter that with, OK, Russ, well, how? let's have a look at the luxury way of doing it, you know. Well, I think that's only fair enough. <laughs> I can see which way you're going, a bit of balance. Actually, no, we just had our annual holiday. We drove to Brighton with nothing booked. And we um, stayed in a very inexpensive hotel uh, for one night. Then we stayed on a friend's floor for the next night. And we literally just visited friends. And that was our holiday. And it cost us next to nothing except a tank of fuel. And, uh, and a few bottles of wine for our hosts. And oh, wow. so we uh, have definitely done it. And before, we've gone to America and um, lived it up for a couple of weeks. So we've done it both ways. It works, doesn't it? Yes. It, it, do you know what? You, you're making a good point because you can have a great time. It's kind of who you're with half the time. Well, 100%. I mean, bizarrely, this, this idea Road Rivals didn't actually start off as a TV show. It started off with a friend of mine, Dan, was putting together an article for a magazine and he said, look, we've got this guy, Charlie Speed, coming down in Aston Martin. We've got some bikes. Would you come along and ride the bikes and contrast the two? And then it grew into this idea of a TV show because there are these different ways of traveling. OK, we might contrast it a bit more, um, you know, in a bigger way on the show. But that, that principle, I think, does work for everybody watching. Um, you know, that sort mm. of set. And, 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 and also, but Charlie and I found that we traveled very well together. So to pick up on your oh. point, you could go to the most amazing place with someone that actually doesn't jive with the way you travel and you could have a miserable time. In fact, I'm sure lots of people out there have gone on holidays with people they thought they knew well and actually just got irritated. <laughs> but if you find somebody that you <laughs> love traveling with, you can actually, it's a way of life. And it's not necessarily who you tra- travel with. It can be who you meet. Yeah. And they can be, you know, you can be in the most basic place in the world or the most luxurious place in the world. Am, am I out to lunch here to say that actually I prefer to meet people who have little than people who have a lot? Well, I think you learn more <laughs> from people that have an integrity about themselves. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people with some money tend to talk about what they've done and how big their egos are, etc. Whereas actually people that are genuinely... We're generalising, tr- obviously. Can we generalise? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, well, I agree with what you're saying. You started it, by the way. But, um, you know, if you do find people, you know, in a in a sort of, uh, you know, traveling lodge in Kathmandu or something, they're there because they want to be there. They, they tend to be the inquisitive people. They tend to be the ones that are more open minded. You know, I, yeah. I bumped into this Taoist monk on one of our trips. He talks about the fact that adventure is a bit like meditation. He also spoke about the fact that, you know, if you travel more, you become more a bit more open to other people's cultures and sensitivities and their way of life. And therefore, it's not so competitive. You know what I mean? When you get back home, you mm. understand that people believe in different things that we believe in, too. And that's OK. So I think, it, you know, in a bizarre way, it sort of makes you more well-rounded when you come back to issues that are around the world. Well, you've obviously been there and done it now because have you finished the, the TV series filming it? Yes, we have. So what what can you pick out a couple of little nuggets for us that we can look forward to? Well, there were times, I suppose, that, um, you know, Charlie and I, he, he was in this Aston Martin and I was on a Ducati and we basically went down all the way through France into Italy. And I think, you know, that's when we realised that we connected. And in that sense, you could sort of say it's quite glamorous. But there was another time when we'd been to Palm Beach and I'd taken Charlie drag racing in a very sort of, you know, it was like 10 o'clock at night. And we were doing this quarter mile long drag strip in the sort of the humid heat of Florida. And I would sort of said, let's because we were going deep sea fishing the next day, which was great. And what a treat. Whoa. But instead of going all the way back to the hotel, I said, let's just stay locally in a Motel 6. But we'd left all of our credit cards back at the um, at the hotel. And I literally had five dollars in my 
my pocket and I went to the McDonald's and they said, you can't order in here. You have to go through the drive through. So I was literally walking through the drive through <laughs> with all these Americans in their Chevrolets with five dollars in my pocket ordering a Big Mac and chips. And I got told off for it. So it's a bit of everything. Yeah, it's the, the little rich experiences that you get. So was it um, something that you would, you know, recommend this kind of approach to life? I guess you, if you were going to do it without making a TV show, because for you it was a job, right? Yes, it is. Mm. I mean, for me, it's very much a way of life as well. I like it. I've managed to sort of combine the way I'd like to live with what I do. Mm. So I would say to anybody out there, if you've got a passion in life and there's something that you actually like doing, if you can try and through a bit of serendipity, turn it into something that you actually can make a bit of money from. So I but I would love to do this anyway. I would travel the planet on a motorbike, even if I wasn't making a living out of it. And I think you can do that inexpensively. You don't have to ride a motorbike, by the way. You know, other people can do stuff in a different way. I mean, I met a couple of girls that decided that they're going to travel around India in a tuk-tuk, you know. And Which never, is a... It's one of those little three-wheeled rickshaws that you get in India. Yeah. And, you know, you'll never forget that experience ever. No. You know, it becomes a highlight of that year. So it's sort of a benchmark as what, what did I do this year when I took tuk around India? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, most people wouldn't be familiar with what a tuk-tuk is, but it's certainly, um, it gives you memories that you cannot ever duplicate because they're individual. You know, you go on a cruise, yes. you're, you're with one of a million, aren't you? Exactly, Kate. You you're put talking it in a me nutshell. Round. Yes. Yeah. You're talking me round, actually. I have to say, I might be more in your camp now, Russ. Well, I think you can do both. I, you know, I'm not saying to people, don't yeah. do this, don't do that, because life is not about saying to people, don't do stuff. It's about saying, do stuff. But add to that the thing that you just said, do mm. it your way, do it individualistically, don't just have it booked through, um, you know, like you're just one of a... Uh, one of, of a bunch of cattle just going through doing the same thing as everyone else, following the crowd. There you go. <laughs> Be the rogue sheep. The yeah. Rogue. Um, if I'm going to if I've never done it and I and I think about starting, I mean, you know, obviously we can watch the, the show and get some inspiration. But just from the horse's mouth, I know you've mentioned the motorbike thing, but I'm never going to get on a motorbike. No, nope. not even if someone else is driving. Well, I, w I will, but reluctantly. Horse. Oh, yeah. Defo. There you go. OK, so what really? That's a bit slow, though. Well, hang and on a minute. Sure uh, what's the question you're asking? How me? can I get out? How can I get out and travel and have a nice vacation? Ah, Make well, it indiv individual. Well, I tell you what. I mean, when I, I went to Guatemala once and I just travelled around in the local buses. Ah, and yeah. the fact is, in a local bus, one, it's cheap and cheerful. You mm -hmm. meet the local people. You see everything that's going on around you. You know, they tend to be very safe as well. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I think, you know, that is a legitimate way of traveling around. And, you know, uh, but the other thing, of course, is train. So I've just done the Trans-Siberian Express from Moscow to Beijing. And so if, if you want a great adventure, something where you're traveling with local people and you get a sense of, you know, actually the country you're going through, I'd go by train. But um, okay, I guess and in a way you get to see a lot of the countryside and the land around you while you're actually traveling that yeah, way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. OK, so what do we need to look out for as far as um, perils are concerned? Well, I think, you know, 100 percent before you go to anywhere, just take a bit of advice, but don't get put off. A lot of people generally often it happens to us now, like, oh, I wouldn't go there. And it's and that's why a lot of people don't do anything because they just get put off. And <laughs> you will find that if you if you open up to people and say, look, I'm thinking of going to the Congo or something. Oh, you can't go there. You'll never survive. So, you know, don't be put off by people putting you off. I think the other things is, um, you know, bugs and spiders always take plenty of DEET with you because that will keep away not only mosquitoes, but things like ticks, you know, because ticks actually have, you know, different sort of diseases attached to them. But they're not really a drama if you, if you go prepared and actually are knowledgeable about it. But for instance, I, I spent a night in a tropical rainforest one time and our guide decided to leave us literally overnight. And I was trying to keep the fire going. And I was going out from, um, you know, my, my sort of hammock trying to pick up old bits of round dead wood. And in the morning, this guy turns up and goes, how was your night? I said, it was pretty actually miserable, to be quite honest. But I mean, amazing experience. And he said, you know what? When I left your site last night, I nearly trod on a Bushmaster snake. He said, I literally only caught his eyes in my torch. And he said, I laughed a lot. And I went off and, and the, the Bushmaster snake was just outside of our camp. If I'd picked oh. that up. Uh oh! Could have been game over. Google it. Bushmaster snake. Yeah. I am going to Google that. Yeah, Google Tuk Tuk as well. Yeah, <laughs> and then I can picture myself T -U -K, doing it. T U K T U K. Okay. Uh, well, some wonderful stories there. You're a lucky guy. You know that, don't you? 
Yes, thanks, Kate. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. It's not lost on me what we end up doing. But I, there's, there I are, don't there's lots of meetings and hard work that goes in to plan these things beforehand. You've got a bit of office work to do, have you? Yeah. OK, well, you've got, yeah, huge sympathy from us. Uh, Russ, when's the show on? When, when can we see you? Nine o'clock tonight, Travel Channel. Excellent. Can't wait. Uh, good luck with your next project as well. I'm sure we'll talk again then. Thanks, Kate.